the top five best intelligence builds in the game. Now, this is going to be the last stat I am covering for these top five builds, as I've covered every other one, so do check those out if you're interested. I have left intelligence for last because it is my least favorite and the one I have the least amount of experience in, so if I've missed any really obvious good builds, just let me know. I am sorry for that, but not really sorry at the same time because these builds are still very good. As always, it's just for PvE, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. I don't really care if you don't. Anyway, let's get into it. At number 5, we have a Wing of Astel build. Now, the stats for this is 55 Vigor, 20 Mind and Endurance, 35 Dexterity, and 64 Intelligence. Now, it is at 67 because I'm getting a plus 3 due to my Helmet piece, which is the Queen's Crescent Crown. But yes, this build is going to be centering around using the Wing of Astel, which is one of the best weapons in the game. It's a curve sword, so it's going to be very quick. It has a good moveset. The heavy attacks are very unique in the fact that they are projectile attacks, and when you have it fully charged, it does a nice double swing. And the Ashivor Nebula is very powerful, very good damage, good stagger potential, as well as good crowd control. Now, my staff of choice is going to be the Carrion and Glintstone staff. I do like this one because, one, it has good sorcery scaling, as well as boosting the Carrion Sword Sorcery spells, which are, they are personally my favorite ones out of all the sorceries. But speaking of which, my sorceries, Carrion Slicer is going to be my main melee option because it does more damage than my weapon itself. Glintstone Ice Crag is a good range option, as well as Inflicting Frost. Great, gla Great Blade Phalanx is a nice homing sorcery attack that does stagger enemies nicely, and Carrion Piercer, which is another spell that staggers enemies. It's just very nice to have while you have a Curve Sword build, because Curve Swords obviously don't stagger very nicely, but these spells will help counteract that. As for my Talismans though, Axe Talisman is going to be my first one. This one will enhance my heavy attacks, which is obviously going to be very beneficial because mine are projectile attacks. Magic Scorpion Charm to boost my magic damage but lowers my damage negation. Gravid Mass Talisman to boost my sorcery damage, and then Shard of Alexander to boost the damage of Nebula. So yeah, the whole build is basically centered around the spamming the Ash of War and the heavy attack, and when I need to stagger enemies quickly or like hit something at range, then I can use my spells. At number 4, we have a Moonvel Katana build. Now the stats for this is 60 Vigor, 25 Mind, 20 Endurance, 40 Dexterity, and 49 Intelligence. Now, yes, the Moonvel Katana is one of the best weapons in the entire game. It is pretty quick, has decent range, has a very good moveset, has inherent blood loss build up, as well as having a very good scaling with a B in Dexterity and B in Intelligence. But the best part about it is its Ash War Transient Moonlight. It's insanely quick, does a lot of damage, very good range. Very low risk, high reward type of Ash War, and you pretty much can use this entire weapon without having to use any sorceries at all, and you'll be perfectly fine. But we have the stats for it, so you might as well actually use some sorceries. Our staff of choice is the Academy Glintstone staff, and the spells we are going to be using is Glintstone Ice Crag for our range option, Carrion Phalanx, Adula's Moonblade, and then Rock Sling. Reason to have Rock Sling just in case you go up against a boss that is magic resistant, which is very far and few, but if you want to have something that does pure physical damage, you can do that. Now, one thing I would have liked to add to this build that I kind of just remembered now is actually adding the Snow Witch Hat, which actually boosts your cold sorceries, and this whole build is going to be based around trying to inflict frost upon an enemy beforehand, before engaging at least, because the ice, uh, the Glintstone Ice Crag is one of the best sorceries. In my opinion, it's very quick, very good at inflicting frost damage very quickly, so and when you inflict frost, you get to do more damage, and then they move more sluggish as well. But the Talismans for this build, Shard of Alexander to boost, our Ash of War damage, Magic Scorpion Charm to boost our magic damage, and then the Mass Talismans, or the Graven Talismans, to boost our sorcery damage. At number 3, we have a Death's Poker build. Now the stats for this, 60 Vigor, 21 Mind, 20 Endurance, 15 Strength, 50 Dexterity, and 40 Intelligence. Now the Death's Poker is perhaps my favorite intelligence weapon in the entire game. It's a great sword that does inherent frost build up, and its Ash War Ghost Flame Ignition is incredibly fun to use. It summons this cool frost ball that you can either use as a projectile attack that leaves a trail along the ground, or you can use it as an AoE explosion. Either way, it does an enormous amount of damage. Now the spells for this, alongside using my Carrion Glintstone stuff, gonna have Carrion Slicer, Carrion Phalanx, and Rock Sling as my attack options. Also, I'm going to be using Terra Magica, which is a spell that leaves a pool on the ground of magic, and when you stand inside of this pool, your magic damage is inherently increased. As for my Talismans, I'm going to be using the Shard of Alexander to boost my Ash War damage, the Great Jars Arsenal to improve my equipment load, the Carrion Filigreed Crest, which actually decreases my FP cost of my Ash War, which is definitely probably the worst thing about the weapon itself, is that the FP consumption is a bit... Too high, the entire combo does cost 25 FP. When you're using this talisman, it only costs 20 FP. And I am going to be using the Graven Mass Talisman to improve my sorcery damage. But yeah, this entire build is pretty much centered around just spamming your Ashes of War until you end up killing bosses. 
At number two, we have a build using a couple of spears. Stats for this, 55 Vigor, 25 Mind and Endurance, 14 Strength, 27 Dexterity, and 60 Intelligence. Now, my main weapon is going to be the Clayman's Harpoon, which is a spear that does get inherent intelligence, and you can infuse it as well. So putting it into a magic build just makes it do a lot of magic damage. My Ashwar I'm going to be putting into it is the Ice Spear Ashwar, which is definitely very, very powerful. Very good range, good damage, pretty quick. Staggers enemies nicely, as well as doing good frost build up. In my offhand, I am going to be using the Death Ritual Spear, which is a weapon that does get in a better dexterity scaling than intelligence scaling, hence why I have 27 dex, just so it can actually do respectable damage. But its Ash War Spear Core Ritual does scale off intelligence, and this Ash War is very, very powerful. It's very good at melting bosses, pretty much like rains all these spears down from the sky, and against larger bosses, it just melts them very, very quickly. But it is a spear, and having two spears is always just better than one because the moveset's honestly one of the best in the entire game. But Clayman's Harpoon having it in my main hand because it does the most damage, as well as Ice Spear going to be my main projectile option. But I am going to be using some sorceries with the Academy Glintstone stuff. Going to have Carrion Phalanx, Rock Sling, Comet Azure, and Loretta's Mastery. You can just use any spells. This is just the random array that I've decided to use. As for my Talismans, Shard of Alexander for more Ash of War damage, Magic Scorpion Charm for more magic damage, and then both Graven Talismans to just boost my sorceries. But yeah, the entire build is pretty much centered around just using the double poke, throwing my ice spear, and then when I go up against a larger boss, to switch to the death ritual spear. At number one, we have a Dark Moon Greatsword build. Now, stats for this 50 Vigor, 39 Mind, 20 Endurance, 16 Strength, and 69 Intelligence. Nice. Now, the Dark Moon Greatsword, formerly known as the Moonlight Greatsword, is perhaps the best intelligence weapon in the game for PvE because it's Ashtar War, which is actually called Moonlight Greatsword buffs the weapon to where it actually turns its heavy attack into a projectile attack, as well as actually making it do more damage as well. But the projectile attack is very powerful, it's very quick, does ve have decent range, and it does a lot of damage, which is obviously the main selling point of this, and it does have a charged variant as well, to where it actually just makes it do even more damage, which we're actually going to play into. Now, you can just spend the entire game just spamming this projectile attack, and you'll end up winning perfectly fine, but we have the stats to use spells, so we're going to use them. Our staff of choice is the Luzat's Glintstone staff. Now, this staff is the best one in terms of sorcery scaling. However, it will actually make my spells cost more FP, which is perfectly fine because we do have the mind to compensate for that. But as for our spells, Terra Magica is going to be our first one, which does leave that magic pool on the ground to make us do more magic damage. Carrion Slicer is a good melee option. Comet is a very good damage and range option, as well as Comet Azur. And to have Rock Sling and Magma Shot, just to have different types of elements, just in case I go up against a boss that is resistant to magic. As for my Talismans, I am going to have Godfrey Icon to enhance my charged spells and skills. Magic Scorpion Charm to raise my attack damage. And I do have both Graven Talismans equipped, however, I would actually remove the Graven School Talisman and actually put the Axe Talisman on instead. Because the Axe Talisman makes my charged heavy attack do 10% more damage, which is what I'm going to be using a lot. And the school talisman only gives me 3% more sorcery damage, so you just much rather just have that one equipped. So yeah, probably put that one on instead because the Dark Moon Greatsword heavy attacks are very, very powerful. And you can spend the entire game just using that and you'll be perfectly fine. But yeah, very powerful build either way. And that's pretty much it for this one, guys. So yeah, that's why you just like and subscribe if you want to. I don't really have to do any more of these builds unless I want to cover the PvP ones. I don't really know. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.